Mangroves not only provide us with food, fish and shellfish and wildlife, but it also provides us with numerous ecosystem services, coastal protection, water quality maintenance, nurseries for juvenile fish and shellfish that are of commercial value. And one most important is this ability to absorb or sequester carbon dioxide to help us to mitigate against the impacts of climate change. I work for the Institute of Marine Affairs, which is a government-funded research institution. We conduct research with the advice government on policy intervention and action to conserve our coastal and marine environment. Point Lisa's industrial estate that was constructed back in 1979 was actually constructed on reclaimed mangrove area. In 1999, a new company came in and they had to put a pipeline out into the ocean and they passed the pipeline through the mangroves and they selected an area we thought there would be natural regrowth. But when natural regrowth did not occur, they hired us to come in and determine why and to rehabilitate. We realized that when they lay the pipeline, that they changed the topography of the area, so there was no natural tidal flow. For mangroves to be healthy, you have to have flushing, hydrological flushing, where at high tide the water comes in, it brings in oxygen, fresh, nutrient-rich waters, it brings in sediments. We went in and we removed that material. We determined how much and we removed that material. And once we had the natural tidal flow and the tidal hydrology, there was natural recolonization. Planting should be a sort of a final option because it's very expensive. So the focus should be on rehabilitating the physical characteristics of the environment. For the first six years, we saw growth and recolonization occurring. However, the entire wetland is quite dynamic and over the years we've seen periods of dieback and regrowth. Currently, we're not seeing much regrowth, so we are going to undertake another hydrological study to see what has changed so that we can determine what is causing the dieback. And once we know that, then we could consider rehabilitation. Now we need to have more private sector engagement, especially since the private sector actually benefits from the services provided by ecosystems such as mangrove forests. Private sector is one of the key stakeholders um, involved in conservation efforts. They have a lot of resources and manpower and some capabilities that the, the, the government may not have at its disposal. The natural environment of the country is very important to the citizens of Trinidad and but I think a lot of people don't appreciate it or see the value it or how the environment relates to their daily lives. There seems to be a disconnect and there's that lack of appreciation. Once you have the, the main stakeholders, the industrial estate and so forth, um, participating in the communities in the adjacent areas, monitoring after the rehabilitation, then I think there's a high possibility of success and getting communities engaged in planting the seedlings and so forth would help as well, you know, and it would help educate them in terms of the importance of the mangroves. They'll have a better appreciation, so they're more likely to protect. We're blessed with a lot of stuff. We have a lot of beauty and, um, in the natural environment, and we could all benefit from making sure it's conserved and protected and keep providing services to the country. Mm -hmm.